Good morning, happy Monday. I was at loss for what to do today and yet I immediately looked over at this book about chakras and I thought I'm gonna do heart chakra. Um, I just read about the passing of a friend's younger brother and as soon as you see someone young, especially when the photos are full of life, it really hits you in this part of the body and it makes you reassess the relationship you might have with a similar person in your life. In this case, it was my friend's younger brother. And again, no contact, so I have no idea how he died, but it couldn't be good when someone young passes away. And I was also thinking about, you can see the heart behind me, um, I'm just about to decorate for Valentine's. And what's beautiful about Valentine's, even though I have lots of friends who poo-poo it and say, oh, it's commercial and I don't need that, or they feel sorry for themselves because they're single, if you just look at it as a month that celebrates love. That's simple. Take away the commercial, um, take away the pressure maybe if you are in a relationship, take away the feelings of you never maybe received the kind of Valentine's experience you always wanted or what TV says. Think about it as love, nothing more. Can you act in love through, throughout the month? Maybe even give yourself a challenge every day to do one act of love that is out of your comfort zone, does not have to be conventional textbook love. Um, if we expand our definition of what love is within our own community and our lives, we can see that it is all around. If you watch the movie Love Actually, there is that one of those opening lines and it really sticks with you. Love actually is all around. And if we look for symbols of love or acts of love throughout our lives, instead of seeing the dark in our lives, in our community, you will notice it. I have a couple friends that look for hearts and that's their thing. Some of them, one of them even wants to produce a coffee table book and she'll find hearts in mud puddles, in the cloud formations, in a stone on the beach. So Anahata Chakra is um, a green chakra. It's in the middle between our lower chakras and the more, uh, I want to say esoteric, cerebral, uh, spiritual upper chakras. It's the energetic center of your entire subtle body. It is one of the most powerful links between the physical and the spiritual realm. So it's linking right here, what happens here and here with the bottom half of our body and our origins. Its function is to transmute the higher vibrations from the upper three chakras into grosser form so they can manifest on the physical plane. So it's almost like the go between the invisible and the visible and the physical. It enables downward movement energy transforming, I don't know if I believe all this. It's the most complex, talked about, and often most difficult chakra to understand. What's interesting is the color is green, and yet in our world we always think pink and red are linked to love and hearts. Where it's green, I love that that color is it, because ultimately that's the color of nature. So if you assume nature is all around, green is all around, love is all around. Your heart chakra enables you to express unselfish love and to be compassionate. It makes you possible for you to accept what life already has to offer. With every breath, your, your lungs draw in air, the element of the heart chakra. Air symbolizes all physical matter that's gaseous in form. Gaseous. Anahata energy does not repress or attempt to negate the emotions of lower chakras. It, okay. it uh, governs your respiratory and circulatory systems. Asthma, bronchitis, and lung cancer can be linked to anahata energy, just like pain in your ribs, upper back, shoulders, chest, and thoracic spine, um, and health of the breaths. And I have heard for years that if you are always having respiratory issues, maybe your heart chakra is blocked. Um, benefits to working on heart openers would be finding emotional balance, enhancing your ability in heart-centered activities, forgiving people who've harmed you. So I think out of all of the heart chakra work, that to me would be the easiest way to, to heal this. Letting go of negativity. Um, mid chest, seraphic, uh, what can else can I say about it? That's very exciting. Um, oh, here, when to work with this area? You realize you're overly judgmental towards yourself. You'd like to develop more compassion, something we all need. You notice how painful it is to accept, sorry, my allergies are really bad anything gracefully or even compliments are you close to receiving love from other people maybe you don't feel you're deserving of it you feel an imbalance in your life and you're always the one who gives and serves others okay that i have a problem with because that is my downfall if it's seldom if ever reciprocated 
You crave a loving partnership but are unable to commit to your or maintain one. You suffer from chronic respiratory problems like asthma and you have a recent bereavement. Interesting. Um, so anahata, the actual word of the chakra means unstuck. So the physical non, um, uh, none of this is going to mean anything to you. We talked about imbalances, what to look for. When the energy is out of balance, free of blockages, you rarely feel lonely. You are not lacking the ability to forgive. You're not short of sympathy. You're open. People talk about being open. I have some friends who have had a terrible divorce. They're closed to who their next partner is going to be there. But this really long list of who they think they deserve and all this stuff. I keep saying, you are energetically not open to something when you're least expecting it. And that means energetically opening this area so that when you're not aware of it, you love has space to move in and you might meet someone you never would have thought of. You are not the type of, oh, this is if you're having about, you would not be the type of any person who would stay in a loveless marriage. You would also, okay, and then what to look for. Grief, sorrow, jealousy, passiveness, heartache, difficulty in giving or receiving love, loneliness, depression, physical conditions could be an imbalance shallow breathing, respiratory congestion, asthma, lung, breast cancer, returning bouts of pneumonia, chronic upper back pain, high blood pressure, and physical, actual physical heart problems. You could be suffering from unresolved sorrow, or someone you love has died, or you are unable to grieve sufficiently. Maybe your marriage ended in a painful divorce, or even your parents. Um, oh, this is beautiful. So there is this one mudra called the lotus flower. You would take your hands open, as if you were going to bring these two fingers together and cup it. This is an open lotus flower mudra and you would bring it below your chin. And um, bring the palms together, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so let's all put our hands into this. It starts as this and it opens as this. Starts, opens. And the mudra, and I would like you to say this three times to yourself, I open my heart to receive whatever comes my way. I open my heart to receive whatever comes my way. I open my heart to receive whatever comes my way. Beautiful. Another one is Anjali Mudra. We bring our palms together, thumb into sternum, shoulders out, heart up and open. And we often rest in this spot in different poses. So, you know we talk about back bends and heart openers a lot. I'm just trying to see if there's anything other than the obvious that we always do. Oh my gosh. I'm going to show you this. Seated with Anjali Mudra, Cobra and Up Dog, Camel. This I don't know if I'll do bow. And definitely not full wheel, upward bow. Um, and Cow Face. Interesting. Oh, see, they do cow head, not the full cow face. So yeah, let's do some of these poses and um, we will do some of our sun salutations. So cover the mat, lower all the way down. And by the way, I just noticed a rip in my pants. So if you see a little flesh sneaking out, just ignore it. It's too bad, these are my favorite tights. They feel like pajamas. Arms by your side, let's start low. And think of your body as a clock. So maybe we'll start arms low at 20 after and 22. Spread the fingers, anchor the nails down, shoulders fall back, and my chest immediately wants to open. Engage the core, just a little pressing the lower back down. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And once more, inhale three, move your arms out to three o'clock and nine o'clock. Inhale three. Exhale, let's move our arms up. 11 and 10. Inhale. Exhale back to nine and three. And finally bring your knees into your chest, low bow. I got a nice crack behind the heart there. Turning the knees on to the left, right arm opens to a T, and we do this every day. So quite often you don't even think about it, but think about it. you're opening the heart front and back when we do a double leg spinal twist. 
If my shoulder doesn't come down, you're using something to help you. And it's usually a block or a folded blanket or a pillow. Two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Center. Pull it all in. Little boat. This is giving yourself some love. Knees to the right. Left arm opens to a T. Look for that shoulder coming down. Opening the heart from this side. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, and really ground that left shoulder in the back of the hand. Inhale, three. Exhale, back to center. Little boat. Right leg in, left foot in the air, flex, slowly lower that leg all the way down, drawing right thigh in, pause. And finally, left hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist, and if you visualize that we're still working on the heart, shoulder down, arm to a T. I also like this beautiful pec or breast tissue stretch center, and little bone. Left leg in, right foot flex, and lower all the way down. Right hand takes left knee over, left arm to a T, open the heart on this side. Center, and little bone. Or, I'm going to start stirring those legs outwardly and then inwardly. Egg beaters. And then we do the egg beaters as my pants keep falling down. As a way of stretching the hips, stirring what's happening and right now. It's the root chakra, place of origin, family, and just gently open the knees wide. Maybe your heart chakra or the love in your life is blocked at a family level. Maybe you need to write some letters. Uh, one of my really good friends, very early in our relationship, she helped me a lot because I'm always worried about making sure family's happy, external family, coming out of happy baby into bonded hand, feet together. And she said, think of your life. You're in a theater. You're on stage. And you get to choose feet to the mat, arms in the cactus, which family members are in the front row and which are in the back row. You haven't asked them to leave but you're not giving them front row access in your life. And maybe you need to assess where do people in your life sit in your theater as a gift to yourself. Close your legs, feet in the air, point and flex. Roll up the ankles, legs wide. And let's just stay here, arms and cactus, legs wide. Three breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale, close your legs. Let's take right over left, flex, arms into zombie. Inhale, up, because I want to help open the heart behind. And exhale, down. We'll do two more. Inhale, up, lifting the back of the heart off the mat. Exhale, down. And one more time, let's take our hands into prayer. Anjali move your prayer hands. Inhale up, exhale down, knees to chest, little boat. So think about the front ribs and the back ribs. That's what I'm trying to help open and engage. Let's switch the legs. Left over right, zombie arms like you're holding a Madre beach ball. Inhale up, lifting behind the heart. Exhale down, two more. Inhale up. Exhale down, and one more time. Inhale up, this time into prayer. Exhale down, egg beaters. Let's quickly do thre uh, yeah, thread the needle. Right foot into over left, knee open. Left thigh towards you, flex the feet and press that right knee away. Amazing for sciatica, tight glutes, sore hips. 
and shake it out, other side. Feet one or two fists width apart, left foot flexes onto right knee, open. Bring it towards you. And shake it out. I'm gonna roll on my side and come all the way up. We're gonna do a seated cat cow before we do a floor cat cow, which to me are amazing heart openers. Hands on your knees, chest forward, that's our cow, and then hollow it out, that's your cat. Let's do inhale, chest forward. So first I'm looking forward, keeping neck neutral. Exhale, hollow out. Inhale. Starting to look a little higher, becoming that heart opener and back bend. Exhale, hollow. Inhale, two, three. Looking up to the sky if it feels good in your neck. Exhale, hollow. Once more, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat, neutral. Switch your legs, tiny spinal twist. Right hand, left knee. Left hand behind you, twist and look over that left shoulder. Counter twist. And back to center. Let's take our, coming into tabletop, we're gonna do a cat cow here, as my pants fall down. Tabletop, <laughs> ready. Looking forward, I'm gonna move this on the angle so I can see him. Tabletop, toe is tucked, belly engaged. And by engaging the belly and tucking the toes, I haven't even moved into an exaggerated cow, and already my body wants to move that way. Looking up, engage the core, turn it to cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And five more rounds, and I will tuck. back, toes touch, knees wide, can you do extended child pose, wide leg extended child pose, but we're trying to bring our heart to the mat, this is going to help open the upper back. So chest to the floor, and maybe you're looking forward, or forehead to the mat. We'll take three breaths here, pressing your heart to the earth, this is uncomfortable on your knees, come out or come into puppy. And then I'm going to come up into Sphinx and transition into Puppy. Puppy, I know my teen students hate this. Your butt is in the air, your chest to the floor. Looking forward or forehead down, two breaths. Now this same pose some people do on the wall. Can I do it with my butt sticking your face? Arms on the wall and dropping the head. I can't even do it there. <laughs> my shoulders are tight. Okay, heart openers. We do these often. We also call them back bends. Let's come into Dandasana, legs extended, hands just behind you. I don't have to go far. This could be all you do today as your heart opener. Dandasana, inner thighs pressing the center, heels rooting down, toes to the ceiling, everything's engaged, hands tented, Pushing the floor away, opening the chest. This may be enough for you. Staring forward, bringing those shoulder blades together. And I remember like shoulder blades are likened to butterfly wings or angel wings. Each one separately moves forward and back, kind of around the spine, the back body. Imagine them coming together to form this beautiful image of angel wings. So chest forward, shoulder blades together, belly engaged, two breaths. Inhale, one, exhale. Don't lose the shape. Inhale, two, exhale. Coming on to forearms, so we don't have to do full fish. Belly engage, chest puff. You can stare at your toes. That might be really challenging in your neck. 
or you can just stare gently at the ceiling, but you're not dropping the head. Two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Option to come out or go a little deeper into fish. Wiggling onto the hands, chest puff, head dangles. I used to force my neck and my head all the way to the floor. That's not good to the body. Puff the chest, head is relaxed. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, and once more. Feet are flexed. Inhale, three. Exhale, press the hands into the floor. Come on up and shake those arms out. Similarly, we often will do um, reclined hero, but I don't want to go into all hero. I'm taking my hands behind me, thighs pressed down. So right now, I know some of you are going to say this is a thigh experience. Maybe for you, it is. <laughs> but it's meant to be a chest of work. Push the floor away, chest up. Option to take blocks under each hand. Head in line with the spine. Inhale, one. Exhale, press the thighs together and knees root down. So a lot is happening. Very similar to bow, but you're not on your belly. Inhale, two. What happens if I come up with my fingertips? Oof. More chest action. Inhale, three. Exhale, come on up. Extended child's pose would be a counter pose. We're going to do one more variation of cat cow as a heart opener. Uh, we used to do this one as part of the five Tibetan rites. This would be a flowy cat cow, we would call it. Tabletop. I like to tuck my toes, bum the heels, arms stretch as low far as you can. Then I'm going to untuck. Looking forward, this is my cow. Chin to chest, start to come up, cat. Chest forward, heart forward, look up, cow. Cat, bump the heels up forward, cow. Flow, 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 flow. And you're gonna keep going a couple rounds. Spinal flexion and extension, back and forth. How does that feel? And I wonder if we did this every day first thing in the morning. How would your day look if you did this little gift for yourself and then come back to whichever form of child's pose you like and all the way up. Okay, mine are my favorite back bends, heart over, is up dog, down dog, up dog, down dog. This really invigorates also the shoulder mobility. I think of it as WD-40 for our shoulders. And I know a lot of you ask for more upper body and wrist strengthening. Tabletop, tuck your toes, press into downward dog. A nice way to measure, I'm gonna come forward in a high plank, I'm gonna move my feet back, untuck, and come into up dog. Roll over the toes, down dog. Roll over the toes, up dog. Roll down. You can also flip, flip, or roll. Rolling eventually becomes a lot easier and not harder on your feet forward, or I can leave them tucked. <laughs> and knees down onto your belly. Hands stacked, forehead to hands, tiny rest here. Toes are about not even a fist width apart. Let's take our hands beside our chest, palms press down, elbows hug in, Press the thighs together, press the tops of the feet down. We're going to take three breaths here in Sleeping Cobra. It is a bit of a back bend. You won't feel it initially. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. And inhale, three. Exhale, bend your knees, windshield wiper the feet, turn your cheek. You can stack your hands, make a little pillow. So if you've got a sore back, you may be doing just staying at this level of tiny back bend. Let's go a little deeper. 
hands by your side, forehead down, elbows hug in, feet root down. So the root to rise happens from the feet, and in this case, my belly and hips, picking up just your head. We're staring at the top of our mat. Hug those elbows in. Engage the glutes. And what's stopping me from going all the way up is that I'm not using my arms as a lever. Inhale, one. Exhale, really clench the bum. Inhale, two. Exhale. And inhale, three. Exhale, stack your hands. Turn your cheek the other way. Bend your knees and windshield wiper. So we're not cranking into Cobra. We're doing this in increments, waking up the back of the body so that we can open the heart. Now coming back to neutral. So again, listen to your lower back. You might not be coming into full Cobra. Hands by your chest, forehead down, elbows hug in. Engage the belly, engage the glutes and come a little higher. So I'm using a little bit of hand action, but not a lot. You're staring forward. Engage, engage, engage. Come back down and you can stay up or maybe you're gonna go a little higher. Engage, engage, engage. Come back down. Option to turn this into up dog. Let's see, this is your upper body. Feet are root down and up and dog. Rest into extended child's pose. Very nice. Let's do one more in that same kind of family. Camel is one that for years I love doing. It actually puts a lot of force on our back. Coming onto your knees, if you need to fold your mat a couple times underneath the knees, do so. Toes are tucked. Why I like tucked toes, it gives my feet a little more height to grab on. It could also stand the blocks behind me. First version is untucked. Left hand's looking for my wallet, right hand's looking for my wallet. Belly engaged, chest open. And maybe you're looking at the trim. Imagine you have a uh, crown molding. So you're looking where the ceiling and the wall unite. Pull the shoulders back, belly engage, and I'm not gonna go any higher. I'm gonna tuck my toes because my feet are cramping. You're gonna do what feels good in your body. And I might look a little further and come on out. Extended child's pose. And come back up. We started with a little cat cow. And let's do one more series of cat cow seated though. Um, actually, let's do it in diamonds. So soles of the feet together option to pull the feet towards you or sit up and hold the ankles. I kind of like this version. Inhale, chest forward. Exhale, hollow out. Inhale, chest forward. Exhale, hollow out. You can use the head and neck with the same motion. So curve in, curve out, or you can keep your neck straight and the action is happening really in the spine and ribs. Very nice. I'm going to come into seated. Sukhasana, knees are, legs are crossed, hands on your knees. Inhale forward, exhale, hollow out. Two more, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Coming to neutral, you might even switch your legs out for our final reading. Um, I was gonna choose a more complex reading, but this has got love written all over it. Life loves you. What are we meant to have? And you know, if you're not wanting more new age kind of stuff, you might consider getting a little deck like that. I already did that one the other day. I feel like these are all messed up. Oh, I like this one. Love is my teacher. So simple. Think of someone you care for deeply. Ask love how to show you to make your relationship sweeter and more loving. And I really encourage you to think beyond romantic love. Um, quite often you might have a long-term partner in your life so that it's kind of irrelevant. You do love each other. Uh, you actively show each other through actions, love, words. But maybe there's some friendships or family members in your circle that need more attention to the love department. 
Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.